At the time of this upload, this will be the 18th Pokemon Infinite Fusion video that I've posted on this channel, which is already an insane number. Needless to say that there's a crazy amount of fun to be had in this game and with its over 175,000 different Pokemon combinations. Each run has the ability to feel fresh and I usually try not to use the same Pokemon combos on subsequent runs. But did you know there's an entire Johto post-game with nearly every legendary Pokemon from the first five generations just waiting to be captured? That includes all the Johto gym leaders who are each champion level difficult, a battle against one of the most popular Pokemon champions, and Red's final battle against gold at the top of Mount Silver. So here, for the first time ever, we are going to Johto. Since this is a continuation of our Kanto run, this will also be a hardcore Nuzlocke, which means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. The level cap will be the next leader's ace, no active items can be used in battle, and we're gonna be playing on set mode. While I have no idea what those level caps are, I accidentally kind of worked into them, so yay me. If you want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. As of the recording of this video, over 50,000 people have tuned into the channel this month, which is an absolutely insane number, a lot of whom are actually returning viewers. So whether you're here for the first time and you like the video, or if you're somebody coming back and you just haven't hit the button yet, please consider subscribing. It really helps out with visibility, and the only way that I can grow is with all your help. But anyways, let's get into the video. We wake up in our bedroom, the new Kanto League champion. Heading downstairs to our mother, she lets us know how proud she is of us, and lets us know that Professor Oak wants to talk to us. Heading over to the lab, Oak lets us know that his best buddy, Professor Elm, is in the Johto region, is looking for a powerful trainer to help him out with his research. It turns out there's a super powerful man-made Pokemon that he's been tracking, and he may have found where it is. So we head out to Newark Town. Over in Saffron City, we take the train over to Goldenrod, and this pink-haired girl assaults us at the gate, sticking a flyer to our face and letting us know that the Goldenrod gym is now open. Clearly, she doesn't know who I am, but she's about to find out. Before taking on Whitney, we fuse our scissor with Empoleon, and I love Empoleon's colors with scissor. I know that Professor Elm needs us in New Bark Town right away, but one battle won't hurt. I love the added lore that gym trainers have teams based on the number of badges the opponent has, so since we're actually the Cancel League champions, Whitney doesn't need to hold back. Going for a night slash, we do basically nothing since this thing is fairy steel, so after setting up two sword stances, a bullet punch gets the Oko. We actually managed to take out her next two Pokemon in one shot as well, with Clefling coming in and tanking a hit like a boss. After getting some trip damage against us with Moonblast, she heals back up and then starts to raise her defenses. Going for our last stack on Swords Dance, she just keeps on using a combination of Wish and Gear Grind. As we get smacked down into the red, we eventually take it down. Togetang is leaking paint all over the place, which is just kinda rude and it and her final Pokemon both go down in one shot, and we've earned our first Johto badge. Heading into Azalea Town, we help out with a little bit of a flooding problem that they're happening, thanks to Unish shoving a bunch of shelter down a well to try to attract his favorite dog. I don't know exactly what his strategy was here, but after forcing some Slowpoke to evolve, we're ready to battle against Kurt, the grass enthusiast. He sends out Leafo, which honestly is the perfect Pokemon for him. And guess what, Type Clang is the perfect Pokemon to erupt all over it. A double fused Torterra manages to hold on thanks to an Orca Berry, and my Robot Weasel goes down in one shot from a times four Earthquake. Dragaterra comes in next, setting up a few Dragon Dances, and he takes a Leaf Storm like a boss. After stacking up, a Crunch manages to take it down. Yuna should have just come to this gym, I guess, and the rest of his Pokemon each go down in one crunch, and honestly, shout out to all of these designs. And Mr. Tile might be my new favorite non-horrifying Mr. Mime. Two badges down. I should probably get to new bar down now. Needing to fill in our fire slot, we go ahead and fuse Mac Mortar with High Dragon, and the result is this goofy but fierce chicken thing. Turns out Violet City is a gym too. This is our last stop before Newbark, I swear. Faulkner is a bug trainer he sends out Saijiot. And Akaberry helps it survive my first flamethrower, but he's not so lucky on the next. Eridos doesn't even have a cool name, and after healing up once, we managed to take it down quickly enough. Yansek seems to have some sort of problem with all of his teammates because it just keeps on using U-Turn, sacrificing each and every one of his teammates, but at least Buttertails has flash fire. After a crit Dragon Pulse, we put it to sleep, and then we swap into Blastera. 
After taking a few hits, we managed to finish it off with an earthquake. Now that Yancek has nowhere to run, it EQs us, getting me down to my berry, and we go ahead and seed it up. Another earthquake does okay damage, and after two more hits, we take it out, earning our Zephyr badge. Finally, in New Bark Town, we find Professor Elm. He's been tracking the location of Mewtwo, and it turns out that he's back in Cerulean City in Kanto. So why the hell did I come all this way? Well, might as well grab a few more badges before we go ahead and catch Mewtwo, so we head over to Blackthorn, where I hear Lance has a really hot sister there. I like how in modern mode, every trainer, including Lance, has been changed to a similar but different type. And Claire's just like, nah, sending out Dragalex. After setting up a Dragon Dance, I reel this thing as an air balloon and take a few hits in the process of breaking it. She keeps on stacking dances until she almost gets taken out with an EQ, swapping into Miasma Chomp and her healing up. Once she manages to attack, she does about 40% to us, and we go ahead and get the KO. Hydreus is out next, and a Retaliate almost KOs us, but we manage to get the seed off. Swapping in the chancel, we immediately get knocked out by an outrage, sending in Vapor Chill. And Ice Beam gets this thing deep down into the red, and we're knocked pretty low. But with the help of his Life Orb and Leech Seed, it gets taken down. Draglix is back in now, and an Ice Beam does about 30%, and he just uh, keeps on dancing. We get it down to basically nothing, and it goes for an Earthquake, KOing my second Pokemon this fight. And Emperor manages to grab the KO. All right, why does she have a triple fusion? This is the fourth gym. Fusion Flare does very little, but it follows up with a fusion bolt and a blizzard. And while we almost take it down, another one of our Pokemon is dead. Scissor comes back in to clean up, and with the Salazard, I have nowhere to run. And Aqua Jet does okay damage, but we get taken out in one shot by a Flare Blitz. Silver Lining is that recoil damage gets this thing way below half. Magagon gets sent in, and we manage to finish it off with a Dragon Pulse. We manage to luck out with Darkdra, and after two hits, we take it down, securing our Rising Badge. Alright, so normally I try not to use Legendaries in my hardcore runs unless it's randomized, but like 60% of the Johto postgame is side quests involving getting off of Legendaries, so we head up to the Ice Mountains where we find this weird glyph on the floor. Playing a little ditty on this flute, a mysterious bridge mirrors behind us. Crossing it, we reach the Hall of Origin and standing at the end of the path is God itself. Then we catch it and wake up back in Pallet Town? Heading back to Professor Oak, we can go ahead and choose another starter, and we grab Charmander. Heading back to Johto, we head to a guy named Mr. Pokemon, says that Arceus is the key to understanding something at the ruins of Alf. Lucky for him, we have the God of Creation in our pocket, so we head off to the ruins. While we explore the ruins, we're randomly transported into a strange room with similar glyphs on the ground that we saw when we first found Arceus. Heading outside, it turns out that we've been teleported to the Shinjo ruins? When the hell did that happen? Meeting this mysterious stranger, he invites us to his house. He lets us know that there's a beautiful woman there that wants to meet us. And why did Red just become Brock now? Oh, it's Cynthia. She recognizes that we have Arceus with us, with everyone's like super casual about BT Dub, and asks us to follow her back into the ruins. When we do, she gives us the history behind the three Pokemon that make up the world, and once we get back into the middle of the room, we see a flash of light. Images enter our mind of the world and beyond. Regaining our footing, we find three Pokemon eggs. Cynthia's excited about this historical event, and we just witness together. We share one more moment. A lingering look. I go for a kiss. And with a flash of light, I'm back with Mr. Pokemon. His mustache. So smooth. Not exactly sure how to process any of what just happened. He says he forgot some of the research back at his house, and he runs off. Needing to rebuild our team, the first thing we do is choose Gallade with Dialga for Virgil. Apparently, I forgot to record myself catching Mewtwo, but I swear that I did it, and we fused up with Giratina to get the frightening Giratu. Charizard with Palkia is this really awesome riff on Gigantamax Charizard, and I love it. And Dust Noir fused with Arceus because it's really cool Rogue Seer. I'm super into it. Back on the gym grind, Price is up next, and now he's a Ghost Trainer. Ghostwine is his first Pokemon, going up against our Dialade. Going for a Swords Dance, we managed to take a Dark Pulse before going for a Night Slash and getting it way down into the red. And of course, it's a Zorik. After he heals up, we go for another Swords Dance and a second Slash managed to get the job done. Shandaluno is up next, taking a Fire Blast pretty well. We heal back up with our Berry and go for the Oko. Ghostwine gets sent back in, and after two, it's Toast. 
When Banagon comes in, I assume it has a fire move, so we swap into our Noir since we're immune to the ghost moves. Setting up a Will-O-Wisp, we take a few hits, getting it down after a couple of Shadow Punches. Kafja is in, hitting us hard with a Flash Cannon as we go for a burn. He burns us as well and heal back up. Despite having lowered attack, we manage to get lucky with a crit Shadow Punch, and he swaps into Biclops, avoiding our next attack. Swapping into Blast Terror, we set up a Leech Seed, and while I can't really do a lot of damage to this thing, the drain from Leech Seed is an absolutely insane heal. Oh my god. Swapping into Magion, we can use Dark Pulse, but obviously the special defense on this thing is crazy, but it's still our best bet, and after a few turns, we take down this happy ghost. Kofjar comes back in, and after one more pulse, we get our Glacier Badge. When attempting to enter Bell Tower, this random guy tells us that the champion from Unova told him not to let anybody up here, and if we have a problem with that, he's hanging out with the Kimono Girls. We head over and meet Alder, a fellow champion over in Unova. He lets us know that he's been tracking a very strange energy from his home region here at the top of Bell Tower. He gives us two stones representing Zekrom and Reshiram respectively, and he asks us to help investigating these energy signatures. Now that the Sage will let us in, we go to the top of Bell Tower. Upon ringing the bell, a portal appears before us. A Pokemon attacks us from beyond it. And we add a few more legendaries to the squad. With that taken care of, Mahogany Town also has a gym, and I'm excited to face off against Morty as he sends in his Gentails. After seeding it, he heals back up, and then Aqua Tail has some pretty big damage to it, forcing him to switch into Blazer. Going for an EQ, we go ahead and get it down pretty low, taking a big hit with his Crab Hammer before we ultimately take it down. Gentails comes back in, and we can take care of it pretty quickly. Magator is up next, and I did not expect Leaf Storm. Sending in Magagon, I go for a Flamethrower, despite it not being super effective, doing about 50% damage. Remembering that the Egg Body actually means Psychic, a couple of Dark Pulses do the trick, and this awesome Horsey comes out next. Sending in Giratu, a Dragon Pulse does about 20%, and a Shadow Force gets it just below half. Another Dragon Pulse does a lot more, but thanks to our Berry, we're still in good shape, taking it down. Haunter's Art is out next, sending in Magagon, we go ahead and take a Night Slash, but it does manage to get the crit, but we manage to heal back up to about half. A Dragon Pulse does pretty good damage as he sets up a Dragon Dance. I go for the KO, only to have this guy use Dragon Claw, KOing my only non-legendary teammate. Arnoir goes in and finishes things off with an Extreme Speed. His final Pokemon, Mogon, comes in, and the extreme speed does just about 50%. And with the recoil from his life orb, we go ahead and take it down after another, earning our next badge. At the Lake of Rage, we find Corliss, another notable Unovian, researching this icy rock, as well as an energy signature involving Unovian legendary Pokemon. The icy rock responds to our light and dark crystals we got from Alder freezing over the entire lake, and we see something off in the distance. Confronting Kirin, we head back over to Colris. He talks about how maybe we can get the three parts of the dragon to be whole again. We let him know about the triple fusion machine over at Silphco, and he goes to see if he can repair it. After that, I hear the final two Johto gym leaders are vacationing over in the Sevi Islands, so let's go interrupt that. On the way, we manage to grab Kyogre and Groudon. First, fusing Groudon with Haxorus, we get this amazing Primal Haxorus fusion. Next is Garchomp with Kyogre, and this is the most intimidating whale you have ever seen. Chuck is hanging out doing what he likes most, checking out the backside of water. He agrees to let us bat him for his badge. A ground trainer in this universe, which makes the water training even crazier, he goes ahead and sends out Dontails. Palazar manages to knock it down to its Focus Sash after the first turn, and an EQ does huge damage to us. Knowing he's going to heal, we go ahead and take it out on the next one. Riptine is a hilarious fusion, swapping into Keochomp. And of course, this thing has Water Absorb. Going for an Ice Punch, a Yachaberry manages to keep it alive as he goes ahead and switches into Mag Queen. Mag Cargo has such cool fusions. Too bad it's not that great of a Pokemon. After a few hits, we manage to take it down. Growlrath? Yo, this guy is cool as hell and two waterfalls take it down. 
Giraswine is out next, and we manage to tank a Blizzard, knocking it to basically nothing as he swaps into his Manta just for it and the Swine to go down back to back. His final Pokemon, Go King, is dabbing since he knows he can tank at least one hit, but he didn't consider how rough my skin was, turning this into an Oko. Storm Badge makes 15. We find Jasmine over on Chrono Island. She agrees to let us battle against her so we can earn our final, final badge, sending in Electrix. She immediately blows her load, literally, and Arnoir just watches in horror as he can't even take the damage. And Frey's up next, and this guy is cool. Going for a Toxic, a few crunches get us down to about half, and we E-speed it for about half before she heals up. After we heal ourselves up, we poison it again. This time, the Crunch managed to get the defense drop. Waiting for her to get her last potion off, we go ahead and take a few more hits while healing so we can eventually get the poison to stick. At this point, we're just spamming Recover, letting the Toxic do its thing, and eventually, we swap into Groris. She swaps out into the Sylve Zone, and I don't know how I've never seen this fusion before. This forces me to switch into Delayed, and the Moon Blast is about 50% going for a close combat, because I do not know what else to do. We do about 20%, and she Volt switches into Electagire. Sending in Keelchomp, we hit it down to about half, and we pop her Balloon while getting knocked even lower. Sending Gira 2 in, we go for Shadow Force, getting it deep into the red, with a Thunder activating our Berry and paralyzing us. After being stunned for the next few turns, we manage to take it out. Amphorae is back out, and we go ahead and swap into Arnoir, tanking a Dragon Pulse pretty well. An E-Speed gets the KO, and Rytar is out now. Going for a Poison, we get knocked down into the red, so we go ahead and send in Palazar since we're running out of healthy Pokemon. Swapping it again into Gororis, we go ahead and tank an EQ pretty well, going for a Dragon Dance. A Crunch gets us to about half, and two hits take this big guy down. Silvzone is back out, but with his balloon pops and EQ KOs. Clinkdose is amazing. Going for a brick break, we managed to get the Oko since this thing isn't flying, and we earn our 16th badge. Heading back to Professor Oak, we find that Cynthia and Randa were both discussing something with him. A similar energy to what we found over at the Shinjo ruins appear to be coming from Mount Silver as well. Cynthia is here because she was looking for some help in dealing with it. Rando acknowledges that we now have 16 badges and comments that maybe we should be trying to help people in need as he's gushing over Cynthia. But little does he know, I've tasted this sweet mustache of success. I mean, I almost kissed her myself. Rando hearing that the strange energy reading is likely coming from a Pokemon, he exclaims that he is going to catch it, racing off on his own. Meeting back up with the two of them over by Mount Silver, Rando rushes off again before Cynthia can give him all the information, saying he's going to be the best like no one ever was. I really like that for this post-game stuff, they basically made Blue Barry, and that I've always just made Rando kind of like a extra version of Barry. While climbing Mount Silver, we went into Rando again, clearly going in the wrong direction. He wants to challenge us to a rematch, saying that whoever wins is the most champion Kanto champion ever, setting his Riorion. I like that his team is a little bit different here, but it is odd that it's so heavily downgraded. After a few Swords dances, we managed to take his Jolteon out and won. Magtick comes in, and with a Leaf Blade, we do just over 50% as it goes for a Shell Smash. I swap into Palazard, KOing with Surf. Whims Array is next, and this thing manages to stay up because of its Focus Sash, but another one takes it down. Chandel Vile goes down in two as well, and Shed Sharp right after his Sash. And we leave Rando, heading for the top. Just before the summit, we find Cynthia racing back into the cave. She lets us know that we need to leave now. Whatever is outside at the summit is too dangerous for us to take on, and we need more information. Refusing to stand down, she challenges us to a battle, saying that she'll have to make us turn back. She starts off with Giratum, and we go for a swords dance. Taking a pretty decent hit, we manage to get it down to its focus sash. When we go for the KO, she swaps into Toga Clank and a Leaf Blade close combat combo leave it deep in the red. It goes for a gear shift and a Dazzling Gleam gets us down pretty low, but we manage to take it down. Lucanape is out next and we need to swap, sending in Palazard. A Fire Blast does very little to us and a Surf manages to get the KO. Rosecore is out next, going down with one Flamethrower. 
King Chomp is super cool as it manages to tank a special rend, returning fire with an earthquake. And our Charizard goes down in one. Arnoir comes in for us, so we go for a Toxic after getting hit with a Waterfall. And EQ does some pretty decent damage, and I go for Recover. After an E-Speed, the Poison manages to take this thing down, with Giratum coming back in. Not sure if it's Ghost or Dark, I guess wrong, getting hit, and KOing it on the next turn. Pori Tech is pretty cool, and of course it freezes me. Setting in Keo Chomp, a Hydro Pump does a lot, but we can manage to heal back up with our Berry. An EQ does good damage, as in a second one goes ahead and takes it down. And with that, as far as I'm concerned, I'm also the Sinnoh Champion. Needing to fill the open spot on our team, we go ahead and fuse Weavile with Reshiram, and look how adorable this little Cobalt is. I love him. Ascending to the peak of Mount Silver, we approach a figure that looks familiar? And I did not expect this. Delayed gets sent in against Paldia Tina, and after setting up a Swords Dance, I go for a Leaf Blade, almost KOing Palkia before getting taken down. Setting a Keo Chomp, a few Earthquakes managed to take down the first two heads with only Giratina left. I swap into Arnoir and finish things off with a Shadow Punch, and it leaves. Rude. With Paldiatina leaving, a portal remains, and I feel it calling to me. Before checking it out, we go ahead and use Zekrom with Aegislash for this colossal swordsman. Approaching the Vortex, we appear on the other side of Mount Silver? But it feels different. Why do I feel older? Another trainer approaches us. Another trainer approaches us. He smiles, revealing he also has 16 badges. The battle begins as he sends out Ampliflame. Ageram is our first Pokemon out, and we go ahead and swap into Keochomp. Avoiding his first attack, we take a Brave Bird that does about 50% and return with an Ice Punch, getting it deep down into the red. He heals up as we go for a Dragon Dance. A second Ice Punch manages to get it down to its Sash as he heals up again, this time getting KO'd. Cello is out next, and this guy is neat. But he's also times for a week to ice. Bye bye! Metamask cuts our attack, and even though this ice punch is a crit, it does not do a lot, and a meteor mask catches down to about half. A waterfall leads it deep into the red, and while a Zen headbutt hits us for pretty big damage, our rough skin manages to get the KO against this metal menace. Lucune is a pretty cool fusion. Knowing it isn't flying, I go for an Earthquake, but it definitely has multi-scale, and with an Aero Blast, I get hit down to just 19 HP. Knowing this is the final battle, I go for an EQ, getting it down to about 40% before getting taken down myself. Sending out Ageram, he heals up again, and we go for a Swords Dance. Taking an Aero Blast, a Fusion Bolt KOs the big guy in one. Paxitar is out next, and a times four earthquake rips through our swordsmen. I use our Noir to toxic this thing, and he stays up stacking a few dragon dances, which is probably a bad thing as he heals up from the potion. Figuring I need to take this thing out before he starts sweeping me, a few E speeds get it down to pretty low, but I get KO'd by one crunch. With three Pokemon down, I send in Rush of Vile, and I know this thing outspeeds me, and an earthquake gets me down really low, and. Dark Pulse does basically nothing. Why didn't I use Ice Beam? Fourth Pokemon down. Roarish manages to take a Stone Edge, and we manage to take this monster down. His final Pokemon, Dust Slash, comes in, and I go for a Dragon Dance as he sets up the Poison. He uses King Shield on the next turn, and now I'm down to half. Once I manage to connect with an Earthquake, I defeat Cold cementing my spot as the strongest champion in three regions. And that is how I completed a hardcore Nuzlocke of the entirety of Pokemon Infinite Fusion. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing. And if you already are, give the video a like. This was my first time playing Johto at all. So please let me know if you want to see more complete runs in the future. And I'll catch you in the next Fusion video. See ya.